Good morning to you and welcome to our Friday prayers here in the villages of the Cookhams. <clears throat> I reflect at this busy time of year how important it is to take time out to reflect on our faith and Christ's teaching and to praise and thank God for his unfailing love and his blessings on us all. Life in the run-up to Christmas does, in, does indeed seem to get ever more hectic. And I can remember my mother during the preparations for Christmas with five young children around exclaiming that there is no peace for the wicked. I was reminded of this in today's reading from the prophet Isaiah, where indeed at the end of the 49th chapter, Isaiah does indeed report, there is no peace, says the Lord, for the wicked. Of course, that is but one of a great number of well-known phrases or sayings which have their source in the Bible, something not widely known, I fear. Likewise, on a more seasonal note, I wonder whether those who encourage their friends to eat, drink and be merry over Christmas tide know that the source of those words comes from the Bible, where it is outlined several times in Luke's Gospel and in Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. But it first appears in the book of Ecclesiastes, when we read, Man hath no better thing under the sun than to eat and to drink and to be merry. Our reading today comes from Matthew's 11th chapter, and he reports Christ's words, which equally are often echoed today. Jesus said, but to what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another. We played the flute for you and you did not dance. We wailed and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say he has a demon. The son of man came eating and drinking, and they say, look, a glutton and a drunkard a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. This is the word of the Lord. In this chapter, Jesus praises John the Baptist and complains that those who disagree with him or who do not believe him merely resort to personal attacks, saying that he has a demon. Then Jesus complains of the biased and personal attacks on himself. He cites those who oppose him and describe him as a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners, because he associates with those who would listen, who were willing to learn and who did not allow prejudice or hate to cloud their judgment. Bringing that story right up to the present day, how often do we, how often do politicians, for example, make personal attacks on others instead of challenging and debating their views and actions? It is usually a sign of a poor critic if personal attacks are used to try to justify an argument. We should surely heed Christ's words and be judged by what we do rather than just by what we say. Amen. And so let us pray. Almighty God, help us when we are confronted by those who offend or harm us or sin against us. Help us to contain our anger and to resist the urge to take revenge. Help us to seek the truth and to deal compassionately with those who wander from the truth. Help us to forgive and not to condemn or judge, but rather to serve you and others with love and compassion, following Christ's example. And we ask this in his name. Amen. And now a prayer for the situation in the Middle East. Spirit of the living God, come afresh to your holy land. Help your people to restore broken relationships. Give them patience to break down barriers of suspicion and mistrust 
ability to discern personal prejudices and the courage to overcome fear. Teach them to respect each other's integrity and rights so that your kingdom may be established on earth. And we ask this in the name of Jesus, the Prince of Peace. Amen. And so using the words that Jesus taught us, let us pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And so, as we close for today, let's say the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. And so farewell for now. And in this troubled world, let's reflect on the old proverb that the darkest hour always comes just before the new dawn. Farewell. <laughs>